Good morning to you. Mark South of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Monday, the 18th of September, 2017. Very busy tropics as we start off the week. Here is Jose weakening, dry air getting in there, and it's going to be moving over colder water over the next 24 hours or so. This is moving over warmer and warmer water, and it is now major hurricane Maria. Winds are 120 miles per hour. We'll take a look at the details here. First, the track map for Jose. Tropical storm warnings now in effect for parts of southeast New England. And this generally means that tropical storm conditions are forecast for the area over the next 24 hours or so. It does not mean that the center is forecast to pass over the warning area. So you can expect the possibility of 40, 45 mile per hour winds, a few heavy rain bands, uh, maybe even some storm surge, flooding, high surf, rough marine conditions in general. That's what that means for the most part. And then over here we have the tropical storm watches in effect still for parts of the mid-Atlantic on up towards Long Island and southern Connecticut along the Long Island Sound, etc. So, you know, take that seriously. It's not nearly as powerful as it once was, Jose, and uh, certainly nothing like what we're dealing with with Marie. But uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, and it's going to take a few days for this to wind down the uh, satellite picture of it here, not very impressive any longer. It looks like a nor'easter, uh, but it's still very much tropical. Don't get me wrong. It's just getting some dry air pulled in, and there's a little bit of convective activity near the eye right there. Uh, a few rain bands just offshore of Cape Hatteras and Rodanthian vicinity, but other than that, uh, really the only major problem from this, and it can be problematic if you don't respect it, and that would be the high surf. Uh, the surfers, of course, love this, generally speaking. And but you know, swimmers, avid swimmers, even novice, you know, whatever. Just be careful if you're out there. I don't care how good you think you are in the water. Some of these waves, when they break right on the shore, they call that shore break. Bam! Right on top of you. That can be uh, resulting in some spinal injuries, back problems. I'm not kidding. It happens, and deaths from surf conditions shows up as a statistical. Usually it's more than the wind. Uh, the wind kills less people over time than we see in the rough surf. So I, I really do try to emphasize that. So that's the five-day forecast for Jose. And what happens with this, I think, is going to dictate a lot what happens with Maria. Speaking of Maria, this is what the 11 o'clock advisory looks like. Getting close now to the Lesser Antilles. Forecast to move directly over Puerto Rico here. Uh, probably going to stay far enough away from the islands that were so heavily impacted by Irma to avoid a direct hit, but some tr uh, tropical storm to hurricane force winds are possible in those areas. But I do think that Antigua and Barbuda and on up towards Anguilla, St. Martin, and St. Bart's will escape the hurricane conditions this time around, thank goodness. And then you can see this moves on in towards the southeast Bahamas, Turks, Caicos, and then from there, just east of the central Bahamas, and what happens from this point on, obviously a huge question mark, and the pattern is set up for this to just come on into the United States if it were not for Jose. And we'll just have to see how the models interpret the decaying of Jose, almost as if if you personalize those models and made them human, that they look and they say, oh, well, I didn't realize that Jose had been whittled down to that. You know, it's not as deep in the atmosphere as it was. Okay, I'll take that into consideration. And then you get the next model run, and maybe the models are more west. And I've seen that with the GFS time and again uh, on this particular situation with Maria, where it's just been shifting subtly, very subtly, more and more to the west each time. So we'll see how long that continues. If it does, you know, we'll have plenty of time to react. Right now, the focus definitely going to be down here in the islands where this will be passing through uh, with a vengeance, unfortunately. We'll be looking at this radar site a lot. you got the U.S.-British Virgin Islands over here, radar out of San Juan, Puerto Rico, and the forecast track does bring this very close to St. Croix, if not right over it. And we're talking about the core. Uh, hurricane force winds don't extend that far out. And we'll read about that in a moment. But this is looking very, very grim for Puerto Rico and some of these islands over here just to the east. 
So if you look at the public advisory, let's read about this. Uh, the headline, of course, that it's rapidly intensified, become a Category 3, moving west-northwest or 285 degrees. Remember how often we looked at that with Irma? At about 10 miles per hour. And then here are all the different watches and warnings. And then I want to scroll down to the discussion and the hurricane force wind part. Now, luckily, the hurricane force winds in this case are only 15 miles out from the center. So that's good news there. It's going to have to come pretty close to you to get hurricane force winds. Uh, but, you know, it's those could expand. You just never know. And you don't want to just gamble. Well, that's only a 15-mile corridor. I think I'll just wait it out. You need to make sure you're ready for this. Uh, tropical storm force winds 125 from the center. So the rain and the wind and all the other impacts, I mean, you can imagine what this is going to do for an area like Puerto Rico. You've got some terrain in there, uh, you know, mountainous areas. The heavy rainfall from this could be absolutely devastating separate from the surge, et cetera. I mean, look at this. We're talking about isolated maximum amounts of 25 inches across Puerto Rico. This is going to be a very, very big disaster. Do not focus just on the wind or the storm surge. It's this rainfall like we saw in Texas and the Houston area and beyond from Harvey. The surge, the wind, and the rain, all three are going to be cataclysmic for Puerto Rico. And there's no other way to describe it, unless it happens to just miss with the core and you can knock down some of the wind and surge issues. But this is not looking good at all. If we look at the visible satellite, uh, this is a still frame, because I want to show you the eye is right there, and you got this central dense overcast around it, and these feeder bands coming in. When I see this, it tells me it's going to be strengthening for some time to come. And, of course, it is taking aim here. Uh, probably going to be passing across, I think that's Dominica there, if I'm not mistaken, and then up towards and maybe over Puerto Rico and the U.S. British Virgin Islands, close to that maybe. Again, Antigua, Barbuda, Anguilla, St. Bart's down here, St. Thomas. I think these areas are going to escape the worst of it, but a little farther to the south and west, uh, it's hard to say. And if we look at the maps, just to or orient everyone, St. Kitts and Nevis, that's a tough one. And, yes, it's coming near Dominica now. I mean, it's really going to have to jump north to get up there, and I don't think it's going to do that. But 285 degrees is the heading as it moves off in this direction. Generally speaking, you know, every wobble, every mile is going to matter. So uh, people in that area, they know. I mean, you got to do what you can to hunker down, be prepared. And this is going to be a devastating, like, long-term problem. So people that are down there, you're going to be stuck for a while, unfortunately, and we're going to have another major disaster coming up. There's just no way around it. Uh, I mean, even if it you know dances around these islands and misses everybody with the core, you're still going to get the eye wall over some of these areas, and very heavy rain is just no avoiding at this time. So down the road, you know, we could look at the models, but I just I think beyond three days, they're just not worthless, but the interaction with Jose and what happens with it and how shallow it becomes in the atmosphere and how soon it does that is the key to everything, I think. And we just don't know yet, so we need maybe 72 more hours to see what happens with Jose and how quickly it diminishes its influence in the atmosphere. And that really does matter, the deepness of it and how much room it takes up in the atmosphere eroding the, uh, the ridge pattern over the western Atlantic. So we have a few days to work that out. In the meantime, of course, we'll be focusing on the potential devastating impacts for Puerto Rico and the islands just to the east uh, from there. All right, well, that's all I've got for now. I'm in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Set up some equipment, just kind of testing things, you know, keeping my game up, so to speak. I have the weather station uh, down in Rodanthe. So you know what? If you've got our app already on your device, Check it out. You go to the weather station part and the live cams part. Uh, a couple cameras up down here, again, just mainly kind of monitoring what's happening. It's not very dramatic. The surf, not too bad. There's some overwash down near Rodanthe, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's not like a non-event, but compared to what uh, probably some pretty decent tropical storm conditions, 
decent, not meaning good, uh, for New England as an example, and certainly nothing at all compared to what's happening with Maria. But I'm here nonetheless. So if you've got the apps or the app for your device, either the Android or the iOS, the iPhone, check it out. And I'll be leaving here this evening heading back to Wilmington. Uh, and at some point, I'll stop somewhere and do another video update for you as I travel back. All right? That's all I got. I'm Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, and I'll have more for you later this afternoon.